Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello there. Welcome to episode 141 of Wise Advice. And uh, got some exciting news for you. It's going to require a little bit of effort on your part, but one of the most common questions I get is, hey, when are you going live? When can you do a live show? I want to know. Can you let me know? And so I finally figured out a way to bring that to you at no cost to you. Uh, So just you got to you got to make a Twitter account. If you're not on Twitter, this will may be the reason why you finally join. If you're already there, it's even easier, but get over to Twitter, follow the Wise Advice, uh, uh, my account on Wise Advice. It's real simple, Wise Advice. And what will happen is I was able to link up my calendar and Twitter together. So when I post new events on the calendar, whether it's me going to a a random meeting somewhere or, or some other event or the show episode, that will automatically get pushed out to Twitter so that you can get an instant notification at the time that's happening. You get um, you get notifications that when I create an event, you get a notification, not- notification uh, 15 minutes before the event starts, and then you'll actually get a tweet uh, when the show goes live. So all of that uh, can be done on Twitter at Wise Advice. Go ahead and check that out. I think it'll make it a lot easier for you to know exactly when, because I know a lot of you... Uh, you know, you wait up at night trying to figure out if I'm going to do a show tonight or not do a show tonight. And so I really want to be able to tune in as an audience together. And I found that's the most, uh, the easiest way for me to let you know when I'm going to go live. So thanks for that. You can always find uh, the show in Stitcher, in iHeartRadio. It's all over anywhere you can find a podcast. But the Wise Advice app is the best way to go ahead and listen to the show. So go ahead to go to your app store, whether it is your Google Play Store or your app store on your Apple device. Download the Wise Advice with Fat Dag app. Uh, I put episode uh, 140B, I'll call it. Uh, it was the question and answer session from last night. I put that video out in the app so you can have that as well. So lots going on. Let's go ahead and jump into episode 141. Thank you for being here. This email comes in. And it's, a non, it's an anonymous email. Um, you know, I get a lot of email, and I understand the sensitivity of a lot of the things we talk about. And, and some of the stuff is hard to share. And I tell you that writing it down and sharing it is the first way, the best way to prove that we're not all um, doing this journey alone. We, everybody has similar circumstances. And so, and I, I will tell you, if you, if you want to share it, I will most certainly respect your privacy in that regard. So if you send an email and say, hey, Mike, please keep this anonymous, I will certainly do that. So that is where this email comes from. So I'll go ahead and open it up. It says, uh, hi, Mike, uh, I've been chugging along with Weight Watchers for about two years now. I'm currently down over 30 pounds, which is great, but it could be more. I know it could be more. It should be more. What I'm about to share with you is my story. It isn't a story unlike yours, or yours, or even yours. The events that happened to me, while tragic and unfortunate, are not any different than those you all face every single day in some capacity. Uh, That is the point in me sharing this with you. We all have battles to fight, demons to work against. Nothing in my story is special, because if you think about it, You've had tragedy too. I'm just putting a face to mine and finally sharing it while anonymously as a way of helping you and selfishly me because it's not about what happens. It's about how we respond and what we learn. I am your average woman. 
I'm in my 30s, a mother, a wife, a career woman, a sister, a daughter, a great friend, and overall a good person. You'll see me running in 5Ks, volunteering wherever I can, sitting at a church connecting to my faith. I'll be grocery shopping, playing with my kid, having a life. I am your average woman. But there is another side to me, one I don't talk about or share, and it has kept me from my goals. As of January 2017, I am a survivor of sexual assault. I never in a million years thought it would happen to me, especially in the wonderful stage of life that I was living. I just never expected it. But it happened. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, thinking about it in retrospect. I mean, come on, hindsight is always 2020. It wasn't a stranger, it was a friend. Someone I trusted because of a million previous experiences and observations. Someone I never thought was capable of this kind of behavior or criminality. I was very, very wrong. I won't go into the details because essentially they are not important. I know I am not to blame no matter how much I try and blame myself. I said no. I pushed. I kicked. I am not at fault. I followed all the proper medical protocol, but I have, however, chosen not to pursue criminal action. It took me a great deal of thinking and deciding, but I have chosen to keep this a secret from many people. It was a choice, not a threat or intimidation, but I thought at that time I was strong enough to bear this burden on my own. I'm sure that sounds familiar to every single person who is listening, Don't we always try and bear these burdens alone? I suffered for that decision for most of 2017. I've been battling depression, anxiety, panic attacks, sleeplessness, too much sleep, overeating, undereating. I just haven't been myself. We all handle tragedy differently. I am not different. I'm an average woman. Some days are easier than others. Some days I can do this plan. I track everything, and I kill it in the gym. Some days I struggle to even get out of bed, and tracking is the last on my mind of the list of things to do. I am not perfect. I have been gaining and losing the same five pounds for over six months. It's frustrating and humbling at the same time. Then, in the past few weeks, I've noticed a change in me. I've noticed more of my old self coming through, the fighter, the mother, the wife, the career woman, the friend, me. I figured out my why. Finally, what a great feeling that was. Last week, I landed back at the number I just can't break through. I am starting, uh, staring at it in the face again during weigh-in. I just can't get past it. So what did I do? This week, I've struggled. I've, suffered, I've stuffed my face with things that I didn't need. I haven't tracked. Well, last week, uh, I killed the tracking. Every bite, every lick, every taste. It's a roller coaster, I tell you. It's hard. This morning, I was dumping more food into my face when it finally hit me. What is it that I'm doing to myself? This roller coaster is self-induced. The fact that I can't get past this one number is self-inflicted. I am scared. I am terrified to be anything else. I am scared to be happy again. Somewhere I've got it in my head that staying heavier is going to protect me from having what happened to me this year ever happen again. Who is going to look my way if I'm fat and frumpy? I'll just blend in because I'm your average woman. There isn't anything special. I have convinced myself that staying right here is protection. It's not true. Nothing will protect me from any kind of harm someone else wants to inflict. Instead, I'm sabotaging my goals and hiding behind fear. While I was a victim of what happened to me, I can't continue to be the villain in my journey. I'm sure that you can relate. I know you can. 
Am I, 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 all I am doing right now is keeping myself from living the best possible life. I am sabotaging my own greatness. I am keeping my gifts from the world. Well, not anymore. About five minutes ago, I stepped in front of the mirror of my desk and I looked deep into myself with the realization that I am sabotaging. I am keeping myself from my goals. I looked in the mirror at that average woman and then for the first time in 2017, I saw not your average woman. I am exotic. I am beautiful. I am smart. I am mysterious. I am loving. I am dedicated. I am strong. I am a woman, but I am not average. Look into that mirror. We are not average. We are incredible. Find what is amazing about you. Those flaws are your strengths. Those imperfections are you. My story will not keep me from seeing my worth anymore. I am worth a happy, healthy, and long life. We all are. Look into your own mirror. Keep searching until you find it. Yourself is there, and once you do, the key to the journey is there too. I promise. Ask anyone. We all have tragedy. You can replace mine with anything. Job loss, death, relationships. And it's okay to get depressed, sad, lonely, scared. Because life is hard. But it isn't the hard that makes it great. Isn't it the hard that makes it great? Had I not gone through all these stages, I wouldn't have seen myself in a new light. I wouldn't have recognized that I am the problem right now, and without that acknowledgement, I can't fix it. You can't fix what you don't know or refuse to acknowledge. It's okay to be down, just don't live there. I wasted most of 2017. I will not allow this to take my 2018, 19, 20, and beyond. I'm sure I will still have struggles. I am sure I will still have days when it's hard. That's life. But I'm sure that I found the key to my recovery. I am sure that while I may gain this week, I will break through that number next week. I am certain the pounds will start to melt away. I am certain I will follow the plan from this second forward. Because I want it. Because I now know what's been keeping me from it. I know my why, and I know my how, and I especially know my why I haven't been successful thus far. I will report back soon so you can see that knowledge is power. If you're stuck or on a plateau, look for your reasons holding you back. Be honest with yourself, but don't forget to celebrate all those wins. It's so important. You and I, we're worth it. We are worth living our dreams and not allowing our weight or our sad stories to hold us back from a life of happiness. I won't allow my story to keep me from fulfilling my dreams. I will not be scared anymore. It's amazing what happens when you get your brain in check. I feel a weight lifted off of my shoulders and soon off of my hips. I'm not sharing my story to make you sad or to look for prayers or sympathy. uh, sympathy. I'm sharing it so you can see the struggles we face are real. They're never ending, but the realizations that come from them are powerful and everlasting. Growth is power. Knowledge and realizations are key. Be well, loved ones. Dream big. We've got this. Um, I read this a couple times, and um, I can tell you it it, it gets to me every time. And as I just read it now, watching 
the support come through during the live podcast on Facebook, uh, I had to look away because it, it kept getting me right on the verge of tears and I wanted to get through it uh, without that happening. So I can't even imagine all I had to do was read the email. Uh, I, I could imagine you know, the, the transformation that you've gone through uh, from the beginning of your email to the end. And uh, what I can tell you is you're absolutely incredible. Uh, you you are probably one of the most inspiring people that I've had the opportunity to interact with, and uh, our conversations that we've had before, um, I, I knew you were special, and and I could I couldn't exactly put my finger on what it was, um, but this this certainly sums it up pretty well, and um, I, and I don't want to I don't want to get go rambling on here, but but incredible. Um, realization in your own story that that you're absolutely worth it. You, you took a scenario that was completely forced upon you. You did everything you could, and then at, at some point you now said, the best I can do is to just continue to have the best life possible. And And as you move forward, there are hundreds and thousands of people who are going to hear this story and they're all going to be able to relate in some way, shape, or form. And what you just did by showing the strength of writing that in is you let someone else know who was afraid to write it in that, that they too are not alone. They too can do this, and they too need to find the strength that you have found to go ahead and, and win. Uh, it reminded me so well of of a story in my favorite book, The Noticer by Andy Andrews, and and he talks about uh, our life. And if we could write down everything that's going on in our journey, if we could say, um, you know, write down all the problems that we may have, if you could write them down, like this email is a great example. If you could write this down, we all got in a room and we sat around each other and and we threw our stories into the middle and we got rid of them once and for all. And we said, you know, I'm done with that. But then, in order to leave, we have to take some struggle with us. We can't go through the rest of this life without some sort of struggle. So, so everybody, throw your stories in the middle. But before you leave, you've got to go through and you've got to find one to take back with you. It's at that point we realize, as we dig through this pile, that we understand how to handle our struggle. We, we understand what our struggle, how it began. We understand how it ends. We understand what impact it has on our journey. So as we dig through that pile and start reading some of the other stories, we would start searching feverishly and furiously for our own story to take back with us. And that's where you're at, is that you've found your story and you say, I now know how to deal with this. I can't change what happened. But what I can tell you is I found a way to get past this. So this is my story. I own it. And I'm going to be incredibly successful with it. So thank you so much for writing in. It's, again, I, I tell you, you don't know how many people right now are going to, sitting at home or sitting in their car, wherever they are, that heard this story for the first time. And they are right now going, that's right. I can do this. If she can do it, I can do it. So I'm very, very proud of you. Continue to do your best. I know you're going to get to goal. I could read it in the middle of your email. I, I sense the part where you finally said, I'm getting to goal. I can't wait to share that part of the journey. I will be with you every step of the way. Continue to reach out as you have, because I'm here for you. And uh, what a great, great email. Folks on Facebook, uh, and those of you who are just now listening for the first time, as I was reading that, the Facebook crowd, you could just see the love jumping off the screen. And that's what's special about this community. That's what's special about us sharing the story is, is in order for someone to hear that and offer up prayer, support, and love, generally what that means is, is one, we feel for you, obviously, but but we can relate on some level or else we wouldn't understand how to offer the right sympathy. 
So those of you listening and watching live, thank you so much for, for all that you do to continue to build this community and make this a safe and better place for all of us to grow, learn, and reach our goals. Uh, Becky writes in and says, Dear Fat Dag, uh, talk about a why. My sweet four-year-old son asked me a few weeks ago, Mom, why are you as big as a boulder? I couldn't cry at that time, but I certainly did later. At this point, I had already rejoined Weight Watchers a couple weeks prior. I don't want to be an embarrassment to my children or my husband anymore. I don't want my children to be teased because of me. And I don't want to hold on to my I don't want to hold my family back from activities because I can't fit somewhere. Amusement park rides, anyone? Looking up the weight limits, anyone? Uh, I've lost 20 pounds. However, tomorrow, I'm looking at a gain. It's okay. I didn't plan this week, so it happens. I have refocused today, and I will get all blue dots from now until Thanksgiving. I wanted to reach out to you at the beginning of my journey so that I can send you some updates when I needed additional hows. I have quite a mountain ahead of me, but I also want to celebrate with all of my wingmen when... I hit goal. It will be quite a while down the road, but I will send updates and I will succeed. My first goal is 10% by the year end. It will hit home today listening to the podcast of the guy. Uh, it did hit home today while listening to the podcast of Chris, who weighed in too heavy for the scale at the meeting. I do Weight Watchers online. However, I had to buy a new scale because I weighed too much for our scale at home. I can do this. My body has grown two perfect little human beings. Losing this weight is doable. Me and my body can do it. Thanks for listening and thanks for what you're doing, Becky. Becky, um, out of the mouth of, mouths of babes, right? Uh, children living so innocently don't fully understand the journey. Uh, you have an amazing opportunity right now to take control of your life and and educate an entire generation that the struggle that you're living through does not have to be a struggle. You can show them that you can win. You can show them that you can succeed. And and they're young enough now if you can if you show them properly, they will probably never realize what the struggle was so you're not repeating that cycle. Congratulations on your 20 pound weight loss. 20 pounds does not happen by accident. You cannot, there's nothing you can do accidentally to lose 20 pounds. You have to be focused. You have to be committed. You have to set your sights on your goal and say, I want this more than anything. You're doing that. You're going to have gains along the way. Every single person will. That's just how it works. Now, sometimes that you sometimes we can't explain them. Sometimes they are because we didn't plan properly or we made a different choice than we probably should have made. But the thing that you need to understand is that the 20 pounds that you lost, you lost. You. You did it. You took control. You made it happen. Now, continuing to track and focusing on those blue dots between now and Thanksgiving or now and the rest of your life is how I would rephrase that for you is that you continue to live healthy and happy and doing activity of some sort and eating the right things, and you will get to your goal of 10%. I want you to, one thing I want you to do, two times in your email, you, you've given yourself end dates. There are no end dates in this journey. There are different periods of time in the journey. There are different chapters in the journey. There are different finish lines that you're going to cross along this journey. But there is no end date in the journey. So saying you only want to get blue dots from now to Thanksgiving, I get the, uh, the concept behind it. But when you put that in your mind, it almost gives you permission to the morning after, stop doing that. Your first goal is 10% by year end. What happens if it actually takes till January 1st to get to 10%? I don't want you to be disappointed on January 1st when you were expecting a December 31st date. So continue to work the plan. Behavior is learned. 
Everything you've learned in your entire life led you to now. You now need to unlearn some things and you need to relearn some other things. And the number one thing you need to learn is that you don't have to struggle. You can wake up every day on fire. You can wake up every day with a goal. You can wake up wanting to do this. You absolutely can win. And when you win, I want you to write in. I want you to continue to show your entire family what winning looks like. It's an amazing feeling, a feeling that you already have begun to experience. And as you just continue on, it just gets better and better. So thanks for writing in. Appreciate that. Stephanie writes in, says, Dear Fat Dag, I'm writing in because I am so close to goal and it's taken me a long time to get here. I am hoping that if I put this in writing, I will have good focus this week and get it done. I have tried Weight Watchers for years. I can't even guess how many years I've paid to be an online-only member. Probably 15 years or so. At times, I've kept the membership just for the recipes and ignored the fluctuations in my weight. Early this year, I hit a new high, other than when I was pregnant years ago. I'm 5'2", so every pound seems to show up on me. And I was weighing in at 158. None of my clothes were fitting me, even though I'm pretty good about exercising and running a couple half marathons. Uh, I took some hard-to-take photos and decided to step into the meeting room. The meetings have really helped, and it's taken me a very long time as I started this in January, but I've lost 20 pounds so far, and I'm within one pound of my goal. My question is this. What happens next? I mean, I know what happens in terms of the reaching goal, then sustaining it for six weeks. I get that part. But today, I dropped my goal down by a pound because it seems like I'm never going to get to the ideal. When I walked into the meeting room, I set my goal at 136 because 137 is the highest number in the healthy range for my height. Today, we changed my goal to 137, and now I'm less than one pound away from this new goal. I kind of like this new range because I can get down to 135 or I can go all the way up to 139. And I know that I'm not okay with seeing a 40 number on the scale anymore. So I have an upper limit now that I can live with. I'm glad to be able to get through the holidays with, uh, with this range that seems achievable. At the same time, I feel like I'm giving up by setting a goal that is barely into that range. Your podcast has been a game changer for me as a way to stay focused. But one of the things that I haven't been able to get my mind around is this concept of stepping on the scale and not wanting to lose any more weight. I've been at least a little overweight my whole life. It's so enticing to think that I could have that feeling. I am so much happier with how I look and how I feel at my current weight, but I don't feel like I'm done. I don't step on the scale at the very top of this range and feel like I don't want to lose any more weight. From your experience, is it better to set the goal lower than the maximum on the healthy range? Or do I just get to goal finally? sustain it for six weeks, and then work on a non-official goal after that. Do successful Weight Watcher people have a goal for themselves that is different than the one that's on the books? I'm really worried about complacency and never getting to what I really want. Thank you for all you do for this community and for our country, um, Stephanie. Stephanie, uh, I can relate to a lot of what you said, so... I just like you, I paid for a Weight Watcher membership for for many many years in a row. It auto debited out of the account. I think that's that's very wise of them to do that. Uh, there were years where I never even opened the app, but I wanted to. I really did, and so I understand uh, that you know the journey that you're on. You open up your email saying that you're so close to goal and it's taken you a long time to get here. Stop doing that. Quit putting a timeline on your journey. I don't care 
how long it took you to get to where you are. I care that where you are is a happy, healthy place, and you're winning. I don't care if it took you a year. I don't care if it took you five years. You finally got here. You've got it. So stick with that and celebrate it. I understand you know, you're a classic example uh, you know, of where we, we say, I'm an athlete. I can run half marathons. I did a couple in a year. I'm good about exercising. But if we don't understand how the exercise and the food play together, we can be fit and an athlete and still be overweight. We can still not be happy with the way our body looks. You're now one pound away from goal after losing 20 pounds. That is incredible. As I just said earlier, you didn't do that by accident. It took focus and deliberate, and it took focus and attention and effort on the food side of your equation, equation to get you there. Now let's talk about what goal is. Goal is something different for every single person, and only you can define it. A scale can't define it. A a rate, a weight chart can't define it. A range can't define it. You have to get to the point where you say, how do I feel? Do I feel like I'm very fit for my age? Do I feel like I'm the most fit I can be? Do I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life? That is what goal is. So I, you know, I, I was telling um, Elise the other night when we went to dinner, I said, you know, we talked about the charms, right? And, and the, I look at the charms just like I do looking at the goal range. I wanted, as I started, you know, those charms, I, you know, my, the first 5% charm was a big deal. I got 10%, it was a big deal. I got my 50-pound charm, it was a really big deal. I got my 75-pound charm, and, and man, I, it, was just, it just lit me up. I got to a 91-pound weight loss. And I had to make the decision, do I go for the 100-pound charm or do I say, I actually don't want to lose any more weight? And that's what I mean by goal. It's as much as I was working my tail off to get those charms, the, the number one charm I would consider that the 100-pound the charm is the coveted, you know, the amazing, you know, I have to settle and tell people I, I only lost 91 pounds. Versus saying, man, I got my 100-pound charm. It'd be, way, it'd be a much cooler story if I could say I lost 100 pounds. Would you agree? However, how I end the story is I lost 91 pounds, and I don't want to lose another. You know, I'm happy. The medium T-shirt that I wear fits perfectly. The 31 inch jeans that I wear look good on me. I don't care what the number is on the scale. I don't care that I didn't get the 100-pound charm. So for you, if it's 135 or 139 or 137, you're overthinking that part of the journey. Quit focusing on the number. Focus on how you feel. And when you free your mind from that stress of trying to hit a specific number, watch my, go to facebook.com on wise advice. Sorry, not, yeah, click on wise advice on Facebook. Go to fatdag.com. And you'll see my scale entry. It, it fluctuates, you know, around a 10-pound range. Because I don't care what the number is. I can tell when I get on the scale whether I like the, if the number is going to be up or down. And I'm very happy and comfortable in a 10-pound range. Now, sure, the program requirements don't allow that. I'm not here to satisfy a program. I'm here to satisfy me. And every morning that I wake up, I put on the same pants I had on the day before or the week before. I, I had the same clothes in my closet that just fit good. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. This morning, I got up. I went down the street to the gym and punched a punching bag for, for 30 minutes because I felt like I could get up and be active very early on a Saturday morning. That is goal. And whether that's 191, 194, 189 is absolutely irrelevant to how I feel. That's where you got to get. That's what goal is. Goal is not a number on the scale for you. Now, if you want to satisfy a program, you, you certainly, there's, then there's some rules you got to figure out. But I'm confident that if I went to my doctor with my attitude, that I have now. And I walked in and said, Doc, I'm in the best shape of my life. 
Man, I get up every morning on fire to take on this world. I wake up every single morning and I love me. I love my family. I love everything I got. Doc, I feel great. Doc, can, can, can we figure out whatever number this is? Can we, can we call that goal? There's no doctor on the planet that would disagree with me in that point. I look good. I feel good. I'm mentally 100% in my life. I'm not satisfying a program. I'm satisfying my need to live the best life that I can live. So I don't care where you set your goal. Satisfy your life, and then at that point, do whatever you got to do to get that documented, whether you're in the healthy BMI range or you need a doctor confirm that doctor to confirm that you're the best. Just go be healthy. Go live a healthy, happy life. And don't care about how long it took or what number it was when you got there. Just smile and say, I did it. Congratulations on doing it. Congratulations on being an incredible inspiration. And just keep on being the prize so that other people will say, yeah, I did that too. I watched him do it. I watched her do it. She made it look so fun, I couldn't help but do it. Thank you for your email. Uh, Michelle now writes in, says, Dear Fat Dag, wishing you a happy Veterans Day on Saturday. Thank you for your service to our country and the Weight Watcher community. I have recently discovered your podcast, and it's been a blessing to listen to you while I commute. I am writing to you today as I need help with the how of the program. How do I stop eating when I'm out of points? It's hard for me to put down the fork. I struggle with sticking to the plan. In spring 2016, I was prescribed a medication that may have had a side effect of increased hunger. I discussed it with my doctor, and we agreed that I would join Weight Watchers. My story is crazy. When I joined, I set my goal to get back to my wedding day weight seven pounds lighter. The first week, I followed a page from a guide on a day for vegetarians. I ate those same meals for seven days, and the weight melted off. I'm not sure what changed in me. I tried adding in different foods, tracking, but going over budget every week. Each week I come to the meetings. I love the leaders and I love the community in Weight Watchers. I would weigh in. The receptionist may make a comment like, you're up a little, or say nothing on the weight gain. Fast forward a year and a half. I am up 33 pounds. Yes, I have gained weight, too much weight. I've had to replace my wardrobe. People I haven't seen in a year or more don't recognize me. I struggle with my brain shutting down after 4 p.m. when my stressful work day ends. That is when I start the two-hour commute to pick up the kids at two different schools and head home. The entire journey is 22 miles. The evening blows by with dinner, dishes, and homework. I do carry veggies and apples to snack on in the car for the kids and for myself. Last week, I met with my doctor, and I told her that I needed to be off of this medication. I am winding down, and I will start another one, but that, uh, that may not be as effective. I've got my why written down, to be healthy for my family, to have more energy, to not have to move my tummy out of the way when I do a twist in yoga so that people will recognize me if we don't ever see each other again for another year. I would appreciate any tips on the how and on how to develop the discipline. There is a part of me that wishes I could take a break from being a full-time working mom and go to food school to relearn how to eat. Thank you again for all that you do, Michelle. Michelle, I get it. Uh, you know, I um, at my heaviest when I when I absolutely hated everything about me. Um, you know, at least on the inside. You know, the public didn't see any of that, but on the inside, I hated it. And, and I thought the same thing as you. I looked up, you know, a lot of those, you know, biggest loser camps or whatever you call them. And, and I, I was thinking, man, I'll just take, a, take two months vacation. I'll fly to some remote place. I'll sit with a trainer eight hours a day and I'll sit with a nutritionist for eight hours, 10, 12 hours a day. I'll be immersed into this community 
where nothing else in the world is going on. I'll be on vacation for six days. I'll come back at goal and I'll get on with my life. I wanted that. I looked them up. I literally looked them up. It's possible to do that. It's a few thousand bucks, but it's doable. The thing I realized in all that is that if I didn't figure out how to integrate this with my current life, then the success that I have on a remote island would not be sustainable when I got back to my home. So I had to figure out how to work it into my existing life or completely change my life for good. So that's where you're at. You're at the point where, where you just, you know, you're, you're starting and, and you, you start off on fire, eating the same meal for seven days. You're right, the, the weight just melts off. But as you see, when you do that, you're suppressing a habit that you, you can only suppress for so long. When something comes along and bumps you out of that routine, you go back to your routine because your willpower isn't strong enough to just completely abandon your existing lifestyle. When you're at a point, you have to stop eating points. It doesn't mean you have to stop eating. You got to develop a list of some go to foods that you know will carry you through the day. You have to find a list of zero point foods that you know you can snack on at night. And then the most important thing you have to do is you have to treat this journey like it's your job. And what I mean by that is, is, is if you get to the end of the day and, and it wasn't the most successful day, you got to look back at the day before or the day before that and look at what changes that maybe you could have made on that day that would have been different. The example I'll give you on that is, is for me, it was a bag of chips with lunch and a sandwich. And so the sandwich would be seven or eight points. The bag of chips would be seven or eight points. I would get to dinner. I would run out of points. And all of a sudden, I look at my tracker. I'm like, you know, if I didn't have that bag of potato chips, I could actually have another sandwich for dinner. It was that type of education that is what we call food school that you can, you can teach yourself. You have, to, you have to track everything so that you have data to evaluate. Your habits are what dictate the success on this journey, not what you're able to do temporarily, what you're able to do every day on autopilot. If you have to continually make a hard choice, then that's not developing a habit. That is suppressing a bad habit. If you want to change your life, you have to completely change your life. And, and that just happened to me. I just realized this. I was gone all week in Tennessee. I was at a work conference. You know, and so what happened to me is I know there are a handful of meals that I know that when I have this for dinner, I can go the entire night and I can wake up uh, and have breakfast. I don't need to eat anymore because I'm able to figure out that that, that dinner sustains me. That happened. Uh, on my way down there, I had the, a dinner that I knew would carry me through all the way to breakfast. When I showed up, I walk into the meeting room, and there is, you know, the snacks, the chips, the pizza that was just laying on the table was there. And I could have very easily just walked up. And in and, and a previous life, I would have just walked up, and I just would have helped myself. But I realized that I'd already had dinner. I already had a dinner that I have proven more than once that sustains me for an entire evening. So I had to take a moment and pause, think about what I was doing, make a conscious decision to not partake in a social environment. But I, I stood there in the most happiest, proudest moment. As I walked in the room, you know, I knew I felt good. And I look good. And that motivation carried me through. So as you look for a new how to do this, it doesn't matter how you do it. You got to get down to your why. And, and I know you have it written down to be healthy for your family, to have more energy, to not have to move your tummy out of the way when you do your twist in yoga. You want people to recognize you when you don't see them often. Dig deeper into that. The number one reason I hear people who say they want that what their why is, is they want to be healthy. Yet I've, yet, I've never found someone who, I've, when I've asked them if they would like to be unhealthy, would agree to yes. Everybody wants to be healthy. So by simply saying you want to be healthy, you have to further define what that means to you. 
you have to make every decision with food against that healthy. Do I want to have a, a, a second dinner tonight? And when I already had one that knew would sustain me, do I want to have this pizza or do I want to stay healthy? Do I want to have this pizza or do I want to stay at goal? You've got to get it right more often than you get it wrong, but you have to ask every single time. We have a holiday coming up. It's Thanksgiving. It's one meal out of about 1,095 meals you're going to have this year. I've been at goal for an entire year now. 1,095 meals I had to ask myself, would I rather have this meal or would I rather stay at goal? That's what you got to focus on. So when you're out of points, stop eating points. Track everything that you eat. Evaluate the data backwards and look at it and figure out what is it that I want. Write your why down. Share it with yourself often. Every so often, read it. Add to it. Continue to celebrate everything along your journey that you may not have been able to do before. The first second you, you realize, you, like for me, today was a, a perfect example. Woke up, sprung out of bed, and went to a, went to a gym, you know, and, and to a new gym, I should say. You know, so I celebrated the fact that, hey, here I am trying something completely new, out of my comfort zone, just because it's fun, because working out is fun. we got to celebrate every single victory along the way. That's what Pamela's doing. Pamela said, hi, Fat Dag. I'm down 1.8 this week. Total weight loss, 91.6 pounds. Goal is in sight. Thanks, Pamela. Pamela is celebrating a 1.8 pound weight loss. That's included in a 91 pound, uh, 91.6 pound transformation. How cool is that? So she's celebrating a 1.8. How many times do we say 1.8? She's celebrating 1.8 pounds. That's how you do it. 1.8 pounds over and over and over again has taken Pamela to 91.6. Goal is in sight. She's absolutely going to do that. Out of Atlanta, before we started the show, Terry chimed in on Facebook and said, I just hit my 5%. 5% celebration is an incredible accomplishment. You set a goal. You knew what you wanted. You put a plan into place, and you've proven, Terry, that you can follow a plan. When you hit your 5%, you start regaining some health benefits that you may have been able to dismiss before. Write down what those new health benefits are. Find out what you're doing now that you couldn't do when you started the journey. Celebrate your 5% weight loss. If you hit 5%, you've proven you can get to goal, you've proven you can set a goal, and you can do whatever you want to do, and then you will be at goal. And that is when we will celebrate. What is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com, click on listen now, send in your celebrations, your comments, and your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebrations because I really want you to be super proud of what you're doing. When you share your story, other people start becoming inspired and it gives them the power to know that they too can do this. And that is what builds the community. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus.